Morning chestnuts. What I'm going to do now is read you chapter one of Oliver and the Sea Wigs. Hopefully before you listen to this story you'll have had a chance to do the learning journey work that I set you based on the blurb of this book. So if you do that first and then come back and you can listen to the story. Let's begin. Now this is the first page of the book and you'll notice there's a section that says if This adventure is undertaken far too lightly. The reader hereby dismisses the authors from all responsibility for untimely death or injury due to drowning, kidnapping by sea monkeys or general unexpected disappearances. The Management. So, Oliver and the Seawigs by Philip Reeve and Sarah McIntyre. Chapter 1. Oliver Crisp was only 10 years old, but they had been a busy and exciting 10 years because Oliver's mother and father were explorers. They had met on the top of Mount Everest. They had been married at the lost temple of Amon Hotep and had spent their honeymoon searching for the elephant's graveyard. And when young Oliver was born, they simply bought themselves a back carrier and an off-road baby buggy and went right on exploring. But at last there came a day when Mr and Mrs Crisp realised there was just nothing left to explore. They had trekked to the headwaters of all the great rivers and stood on the summits of all the unconquered mountains. Thanks to them, the lost city of Propacopacatel was lost no longer. The mystery of the Mokele Mumbai marshes had been solved. There were no more blank spaces left on the map. So they packed their belongings aboard their Explorer-mobile and drove home to the house which they owned, but had hardly ever lived in, by Deepwater Bay, near the little seaside town of St Porrox. No more exploring for us, they told each other sadly. It's time we settled down. Oliver wasn't sad though. He was excited. He was tired of living the explorer's life. The house he was coming home to was one he'd only seen on holidays, brief two-week breaks before fresh expeditions. Ten years on the move, no time to make friends or feel at home anywhere, no time to go to school. He'd never even had a proper bedroom of his own, just a bunk in the back of the explorer mobile, and all his things were hidden away in trunks and storage boxes in the spaces under the explorer mobile seats. He thought it would be exciting to have a whole house to live in and wake up every day to the same view. At Deepwater Bay, he would have his own bedroom and bathroom and he would be starting next term at the school in St Porrox. That might not sound so good to you, but Oliver had never been to school and he was excited about that too. He perched between his parents as mum steered the Explorer mobile carefully along the winding lanes. He was waiting for the moment when Deepwater Bay came in sight. It's not a very pretty house, his mother reminded him. It's really rather old and creaky and the wind blows right through it. It needs a lot of work doing, but we never found the time or the money. There's not a lot of money in exploring. Okay, said Oliver, but he didn't stop feeling excited. They came over a sudden headland and there it was, the blue bay all dotted with shaggy, steep-sided islands. The house stood at the top of the beach. It was big and grey, with orange lichen dappling its roof. Wow, said Oliver. Wow, said his dad. Wow, said his mum, stopping the explorer mobile on a curve on the s- of the steep lane and just sitting there, staring in sheer amazement. Wow, they all three said again. Oliver was pleased that his parents sounded just as thrilled as he was. Then he looked at them and saw that it was not the house that they were looking at, but all those scruffy islands in the bay. Where have they come from? asked his father. I don't remember them. Mum was rustling the map. They are not marked here, she gasped. Nine, ten, fifteen, Dad muttered. They must be new islands. Volcanic, probably. Unmapped, said Mum. Uncharted, said Dad. Unexplored, they whispered both together. Oliver sighed. He had seen them like this before, whenever they heard of a vanished city or a forbidden tomb. 
Still, he thought, at least they can explore these islands from home. He looked happily at the house while Mum, with her eyes on the island, started the explorer mobile again and took it screeching down the zigzag lane to the beach. Oliver started unpacking at once. While his mother and father fetched down their inflatable dinghy from the explorer mobile's roof, he unlocked the house and carried boxes and bags and suitcases inside. He walked through the big, echoey, dimly familiar rooms, whisking dust sheets off the armchairs, which had waited so long for someone to come and sit in them again. He ran upstairs to his room and bounced on the bed. He loved his room already, the way the sunlight came into it and made a long golden stripe down the wallpaper. He opened the window to let in the air and the sea wind and the cries of the gulls. Oliver, called his mother and father. They were down at the sea's edge, ready to go off and explore the new islands. They stood in the shallows, waving. Their inflatable dinghy tossed between them as the waves broke under it. Oliver, come with us. I'm busy, Oliver shouted back. Why don't you go and have a look around without me? I'll be all right. He sighed. He knew his parents loved him. It was just that sometimes he had the feeling that they loved exploring more. The little dinghy's outboard motor drowned out the seagulls with its angry bee buzz as mum steered through the surf. It circled a small island just offshore, then took off with a roar across the bay towards the larger ones. Oliver brought his suitcase upstairs and opened it. Carefully, he set out his favourite things on shelves and on the windowsill. He arranged his books on the shelf beside his bed. He hung up his clothes in the cupboard. The bar of sunlight moved along the wall. And suddenly, Oliver realised that it was quite a long time since he'd heard the outboard or his parents' voices. He went to the window and leaned out. Deepwater Bay was deserted, and the evening sun shone golden on the waves. There was no sign of Mum and Dad. The islands had vanished. There was only the orange inflatable dinghy washing back to shore upon the evening tide. <laughs>